Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Solara Active Pharma Sciences Limited Q4 FY23 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchtone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now have the conference over to Mr. Abhishek Singhal. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you, Lizanne. A very good afternoon to all of you. And thank you for joining us today for Solara Active Pharma Sciences Earnings Conference Call for the fourth quarter and full year ended financial year 2023. Today we have with us Ritesh Solara Purwang, CEO, and Hari Edi and CFO to share the highlights of the business and financials for the quarter. I hope you've gone through our results release and the quarterly investor presentation, which have been uploaded on our website, as well as the stock exchange. The transcript for this call will be available in a week's time on the company's website. Please know that today's discussion may be forward-looking in nature and must be viewed in relation to the risks pertaining to our business. After the end of this call, in case you have any further questions, please feel free to reach out to the investor relations team. I now hand over the call to the management, to, to Jitesh, to make the opening remarks. Thanks, Abhishek. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining the call today. I'm delighted that we concluded physical year FY23 on a positive note, having accomplished many of the goals we set for ourselves at the beginning of the year. Specifically coming to the Q4 performance, on revenue front, uh, coming to the performance for FY23, on the revenue front, we had a 5% growth year on year. Gross margins stood at 50.3%, EBITDA at 51.5 crores. When we started the financial year, we had set forth key strategic priorities, which included resetting and concentrating the base business, restoring R&D velocity, addressing under recoveries at our newly commissioned WISAC site, and expanding into new products and geographies. We are pleased to report that we are trending positively towards a broad range of outcomes, and our performance in FI23 is indicative of the company's efforts to rebound. Coming to our base business, base business has shown strong growth momentum in second half of FI23 when compared to the first half. Regulated market revenues stood at 72% during Q4 f 23. Our base business has achieved EBITDA margins of 19% during the quarter four FI23. One of our key achievements is securing ibuprofen DMF approval in China. We believe we are the first company outside of China to achieve this milestone. Sales have already commenced. We continue to expand our ibuprofen franchise across regulated market geographies and branded customers. Our non-ibuprofen business consists of key products like Sebelemic Carbonate, Prosequental, Saprotrin, Succinyl Colon Chloride, and many others, where we are one amongst the few regulated market players. We continue to expand our portfolio on polymer-based chemistry with the addition of three products. Secondly, on our R&D, we have filed three new US DMS in Q4, taking the total to five new products filed in FI23. We continue to expand our geographies for our existing products. Uh, in quarter four FI23, we have done three market extensions for our three of our existing products, taking a total of 12 market extensions for 15 existing products during FI23. The investments we have made in new products since the inception of Solara are yielding us the results. New product revenues contribute 14% of the total sales. We continue to invest in our R&D for strengthening our generic API portfolio and clamps to meet the growing demands for our existing products as part of increasing market share through market extensions, addressing regulatory requirements for new products. Coming to WISAC, we have received US FDA and European CEP approval in, the, in FI23. Our capacity utilization at WISAG has improved in Q4. 
we have completed one of the key backward integration program for one of our APIs. We initiated supply of APIs from Vizag, which started, which commenced from Q3 FY23. We have got commitments from our key customers to qualify Vizag, which will enhance capacity utilization in second half of FY24. Out of the five new US DMS files in the last financial year, three are from Vizag. Fourthly, our efforts on the CIP has already given the results, but the full realization of the work which we have undertaken in the last financial year will flow through from Q2 of FI24. We expect the momentum to carry on for the goals which we have set to bring the company back to its historical growth rates. With this, I now hand over to Purvan, our CEO. Thanks, Jitesh. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm excited to be part of Solara's 3.0 growth journey. The second half of financial year 2003 has brought in more confidence in the fundamentals of the business. Our margins have risen, and we are working toward building new opportunities for sustainable growth. These improved financial results are a testament to the hard work and dedication of our employees and the strength of our product portfolio. Moving forward, we will continue to focus on outcomes that deliver value to all our stakeholders. I would like to talk primarily on our focus areas for growth for future. Number one, we will be very strong. Uh, we will see a strong growth in the base business and new products by pouring into new geographies. Secondly, we will have new capa capability addition. Third, we are talking about crams big time in terms of business growth through low molecular weight peptides and material sciences. Fourth, as Jitesh already mentioned, we are talking about enhanced capacity utilization at WISAC. And last but not the least, we will continue to focus on cost improvement programs and backward integration. With this, I now hand over to Hari, our Executive Director and CFO to take us through the financials for Q4 financial year 2023. Uh, thank you, Shuman. We are pleased to announce our FI23 financial results, and key results are as follows. Our revenue for FI23 is at 1,466 crores, growth of 14% year on year. Our gross margin year as well looked at 46%, and operating EBITDA at 226.8 crores with a 15.5% margin, and our reported EBITDA at 150.7 crores, growth of 63% over the last year. As Jitesh and Poovam rightly pointed out that our course correction strategy has already started giving results, and we were very visible from our FI23 performance. The corrective actions have resulted in many positive outcomes during FI23, like reduced under recovery of advice acts, regulatory approvals for advice act type, reduction in the net current asset, reduction in the gross rate level, and improved financial ratios. Our net current assets have reduced by 65 crores in FI23, primarily due to the reduction in the inventory, GST, and our gross debt has been reduced by 23 crores in FI23. We are working to achieve the comfortable debt to, uh, net debt to EBITDA ratio in the coming years, and our primary focus is improving our cash flows to the prudent application of capital. We continue to remain focused on the actions to improve profitability and very confident about growth perspectives for Solara. Thank you. I think I should take the questions now. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin with the question and answer session. Anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one on your touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself in the question queue, you may press star into participants requested the use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is in the line of Tushar Manudani for Mozilla Lozal Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so just on gross margins, uh, firstly, is this to do with uh, better realization or uh, to do with the lower raw material cost, if you could explain that? 
No, it's a combination of uh, the product mix uh, and the CIP program. Uh, from a, a raw material sourcing point of view, it's more or less uh, been the same over the quarters. We have not witnessed, uh, so, so uh, just to a clarification, so we have not had, uh, in the past witnessed steep rise in raw material prices and so and so subsequently now we are not seeing the slowdown. More or less we are stable in terms of the raw material price. Is that the way to understand? Yes, sure. Yes, for sure. Okay, that helps. Uh, but unlike, unlike other API companies, at least the ones, I mean, uh, there has been a good amount of offtake in 4Q in particular. So has there been any, uh, let's say, sort of a rebuilding in terms of the inventory uh, to normalize the uh, inventory in the channel uh, sort of thing, or it's more a steady state for your products? The inventory level, you know, um, uh, you know, the, uh, the depending upon the product growth and inventory level, as you know, we have considerably reduced the you know, total inventory compared to the last one year. And, you know, we expect that, you know, there isn't a procurement uh, plan and production plan has been, you know, normalized so that, you know, we don't just in time concept we have introduced and uh, we don't we like to reduce our inventory level and working capital in a in a phase manner I understand. Uh, and just secondly uh, sequentially we are seeing some dip in sales so, uh, and subsequently how to look for fy24 if any uh, quantitative guidance would like to give in terms of revenue as well as margins so you see the we won't want to say right now, but the focus is in terms of, as I've been always saying in all the previous calls, that we want to bring back the company to its historical levels. So here as a whole for FY24, there will be improvement in sales as well as in terms of uh, the EBITDA. Uh, but at some point, you know, we'll be happy to communicate in terms of uh, the growth plans what we have. Okay, that's it from me. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Dhruv Maheshwari, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you for the opportunity. My first question is, it is to see reduction in under recoveries of the YTEC plant. By when are we expecting the plant to break even? And what is the targeted capacity utilization for the plant over the next 12 months? Yeah, good. Uh, no, we are, we, are, we are just in Jitesh uh, uh, call. You indicated that uh, you know, we have received the USAP approval and uh, EU approval for the facility. And uh, we are in the process of qualifying and uh, many customers to take the product from our side. From get two onwards, there will be substantial improvement in the capacity suggestion of the plan. And during the two four, yeah. And you know, in uh, FI24, the capacity should be more than 60% in my life. Got it. Uh, my next question is, can you give us an outlook for the revenue growth and the EBITDA margin over the medium term? So this uh, goes back to the previous question what Tushar had asked, right? Um, well, here as a whole for FI24, you will see a growth in terms of the revenue and uh, the EBITDA. In terms of the guidance, um, what I can definitely tell you is we are very upbeat in terms of Solara returning it to its historical levels, and you will see this from the second half of this financial year. Uh, and just to add, uh, the case mentioned, we have noticed in the current FL23, there has been a substantial improvement in EBITDA, and you know, we've grown our EBITDA by uh, nearly uh, 63%, and revenue growth by 14%. So this gives the indication that you know what active action for as resulted in FI23 improved performance. So just to, we are tracking the same line for FI24, and we can see that, you know, good positive results in FI24. Thank you, that's all. Thank you. A reminder to the participants, anyone wishing to ask a question, may please press star in one. The next question is from the line of Sudan Chaudhary, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thanks for giving me this opportunity. 
सर माई फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज वी हैव सीन कंसिस्टेंट सिक्वेंशियल इंप्रूवमेंट इन ग्रॉस मार्जिन ओवर द लास्ट फोर क्वार्टर्स तो इज दिस नंबर ऑफ फिफ्टी परसेंट मार्जिन सस्टेनेबल नंबर गोइंग फॉरवर्ड फॉर द इयर एज अ होल यस बट यू नो क्वार्टर ऑन क्वार्टर यू नो दैल बी दैल बी प्लस एंड माइनस बट द इयर एज अ होल यस एंड बिकॉज ऑफ द वेरियस प्रोडक्ट मेक्स एज वेल एज सम ऑफ द प्रोडक्ट्स वेर बी सप्लाई uh happens uh, during the second half oh god right uh, another question uh, uh we have seen that our working capital have decreased 25 days in uh, last financial year that is fi23 so uh, in your opinion how much further can we reduce this in the next financial year it i think the number of days is 200 days plus and it will come down to 150 days by fi24 ओके सर थैंक यू थैंक यू एंड सर रिमाइंडर टू द पार्टिसिपेंट्स एनीवन विशिंग टू आस्क अ क्वेश्चन मे प्लीज प्रेस स्टार इन वन द नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज फ्रॉम द लाइन ऑफ सुब्रत सरकार फ्रॉम माउंट इंफ्रा फाइनेंस प्लीज गो अहेड हेलो यस हेलो हेलो yeah sir uh, just uh, two three questions first on the capex sir if you can give some guidance on the capex side like uh, for next uh, year and uh, maybe for next two years uh, how, how much capex we are planning to do or most of the capex is done number one second uh, from a visac uh, for our visac facility like what is our peak uh, uh, revenue which we can uh, achieve and like what kind of capacity utilization we are expecting uh, uh, for next year and generally how much time we are expecting for ramping up of the visac facility this is the initial question see the from a capex point of view we will have our maintenance capex uh, and then there is a growth capex our growth capex is concerned we have you know made all those investments and we are only focusing in terms of better capacity utilization in visac but yes there will be a maintenance capex across the plants uh, for compliance and that could be in the range uh, of uh, 70 to 80 crores total for the year hello and uh, from a visac revenue perspective right uh, as yeah. i mentioned here that you know once uh, uh, the customers um, take the uh, uh, validation batches and the capacity utilization will only increase in the second half we will able to then guide you you know what is the peak revenue we are looking at from a visac point of view there's a lot of uh, work is in uh, progress right now yeah so, uh, just a uh, backward question like uh, how much we have spent total in uh, uh, visac and what kind of asset turnover generally we uh, 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 like uh, is optimum for this kind of a plant see we are always aiming to improve the fixed assets uh, turnover ratio right and uh, you know from a plant uh, wise you know we don't give any specific uh, numbers and uh, that includes even the investment but you will see the revenue growth over the next uh, years the major revenue growth is going to be coming from visac so we are not disclosing how much we spend on visac facility also कमर्शियल पार्ट वाइम लाइन your uh, question is related to the approval what we got for ibuprofen in china correct 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 yes we already have the approval and we have already commenced commercial supplies okay okay so uh, any any sort of market size you would like highlight 
for this product in china currently yeah, we, are, we are also assessing the market size in china they say it's substantial and uh, there is not uh, the market what is this type in ims is different than what's the actual ground reality so we do hope that we will have a substantial market share in china over the next few years and and just lastly on this so the formulator will have to participate in tender using your dma and then and that is how we'll get the business or or we already have the uh, i mean since we already commercialized but just a clarification out here that we already have a good amount of order for the coming year or it's more like a few months out yeah so we have started getting the orders as i said you know for our you know it it is just not one customer at least we have couple of customers and they are also preparing for the launch quantity so you know the substantial uh, requirement in the jump in the requirement is going to come in the the next financial year and this is from uh, vizac facility uh this is from uh, right now from our quantity facility but uh, we are also qualifying we are adding vizac as an additional site so that process will also be completed in this financial year okay sir thank you thank you a reminder to the participants anyone wishing to ask a question may please press star in one the next question is on the line of whatsapp jaipuria from dam capital advisors please go ahead uh, i so thank you for the opportunity so my first question is regarding your pipeline can you give some more color on the upcoming launches in fr2425 so um from the pipeline perspective um you know one of the key actions what we are taking is um, you know the reclassification of the kadur oai and in the last uh, couple of investor calls also i mentioned that we are pen- there are 11 new approvals which are pending just from the kadur side and all of those 11 at least three are very significant in terms of both revenue as well as our ebitda margins um and you know this um, the momentum in terms of uh, uh, the new product filings which we have again reinitiated in the last year for those you know we will start seeing commercial revenues in second half of fy25 typically you know we had at least three to four new product launches every year and that uh, momentum will carry on from fy25 so so these uh, 11 new approvals uh, that you mentioned so which which therapeutic area would these be in and if you could give a broad color on the end market size for these molecules the uh, what i can tell you is uh, when i say the significant right at least those two out of those three are polymer based uh, products and uh, the the market size one of them is it's like a global requirement so it's not just dependent um, on the us we have initiated the efforts for europe as well but us uh, market alone for uh, uh, once we uh, get the approval that could add at least 5 million dollars just for one product and the other one would be about another 4 to 5 million so these two products itself will give us a uh, uh, 10 million dollars in terms of uh, new revenues coming out of our kadlur site and this is one of our specialization is in the polymer based chemistry because what we look at is more from a therapeutic we look at the complexity of uh, the product whether it is in the process manufacturing or it is in the polymorph so uh, so typically how many players would they uh, would they be in these markets in these uh, so polymer based in, the, in the polymer based chemistry as a pure play api company right there are only uh, two uh, companies who have current approved dms and selling polymer based products and one is solara okay that's that's great um secondly uh, so for api companies have reported very strong export sales during the quarter and our growth has been relatively muted when compared to them so is there any reason that you could point out particularly for this your question is related to our regulated market sales only being 72% yeah nobody historically also 
you know, our, uh, when we say regulated markets, right, when we classify this into North America, Europe, and then in Asia, we say Japan, South Korea, these are some of the regulated markets. And this percentage has been historically around that much, 70 to 75 percent. Uh, we have very small presence in semi-regulated markets, and that is also very important for us uh, because it's not like spot business, it's a long-term customer relationships what we have had. So our regulated market business will be at, uh, you know, uh, 75, and once, you know, the Vizag and the Karlur approval comes, the 75% can become 77 or 78, but it will be around that range only. Uh, so, so when do you expect the Kodalur uh, facility to be uh, approved? Um, see, as for the Gedufa 3 guidelines, you could uh, a company can write to the US FDA for you know asking for reinspection of the facility, and we have done that. And we are hoping now in the recent waves, we have seen many companies who are in the warning letters. Uh, their warning letters have been cleared with the FDA inspecting. That gives us a a positive outlook that we could have an uh, inspection probably in this financial year itself, uh, if not in the first half. Okay, that's that's great. Thanks for taking my question. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Dwanil Desai from Total Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, good afternoon, sir. Uh, so my first question is on balance sheet type. Right? So, uh, you know, for the FI24, how do we see the debt reduction? So from thousand crore, both short term and long term put together, uh, you know, uh, how how are we looking at from FI24 perspective? So there'll be marginal reduction in the uh, net debt, you know, the compared to the current level. And we don't expect any substantial reduction because we are preserving the funds for the growth also. So we'll, whatever the funds we generate will be, you know, be balanced between the debt deduction and the fund allocation for the capital growth capital. From 1,000 crores, we expect that, you know, there'll be around 10% uh, reduction in the debt level. Okay. And of course, uh, uh, you know, our net debt to EBITDA, if you compare the uh, the FI22 to FI23, it's been a, a significant uh, reduction. Uh, we were at uh, 10 plus and now we are at 6 and our aim is always to bring it down and you will see that the net debt to EBITDA also will be going down in FI24. Uh, FI right, that's primarily because the EBITDA will go up. Right, so. right. yeah, yeah right. Right. Uh, Sir, second question is, uh, so you uh, indicated from S2 onward, we'll, we'll kind of strive to go back to earlier levels at which the company was operating. Uh, so are you talking more from volume perspective or absolute top line perspective? Uh, can you throw some light on that? And also you can tie in uh, that with the uh, gross margin levels. I think we have always operated around, you know, 49, 50% kind of a gross margin. We are already there. So is there any scope for further improvement in gross margin from here on? Well, so, you know, year as a whole, right, we are aiming at uh, maintaining at 50% and uh, this, um, and I, as I mentioned, we are just waiting for these new product approvals to come. I mean, just to give you a flavor of it, if the Kardu re reclassif reclassification happens, at least we can see one of those two uh, key products on the polymer side, we could have uh, a good amount of sales in the second half. And then the gross margin levels are uh, anywhere between 55 to 55%. Um, so, you know, we are focusing on all these polymer products and uh, the new products will definitely have a higher gross margin. But when you look at a weighted average of the existing and the new products, it will be at about 50%. The other part is, you know, uh, the trams business, of course, comes with a significant higher gross margin compared to the generic API business, right? We are making efforts in terms of uh, uh, the cramps. You know, it is, we did see a, uh, uh, we did see a growth, but a growth, uh, something which we are looking in terms of the significant growth in CRAMS will only come in FI25 or FI26 because we are seeding uh, now when the commercial supplies take some time in terms of um, uh, the revenue as well as a higher gross margin. But for at least for FI24, the year as a whole, we are confident to be uh, at that closer to the 50% level. 
question on this whether we are looking at going back to earlier volume levels because the reason I'm asking this question is that of the board because of the RM price correction, PSA prices have also gone down. So, uh, uh, so your realization also, you know, would not be the same. So, uh, sorry, you, sorry you to broke? interrupt, Mr. Desa, your audio is breaking up. Is better? Uh, sir, please repeat your question. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, my question is that, uh, you know, we indicated that we would want to go back to the earlier levels uh, from second half onwards. So, are we talking in terms of volume? Uh, because realizations, uh, you know, uh, year on year at least would have gone down because RM prices have corrected and dine with that EPI prices also would have corrected. So, some, some guidance on that. There's a mixture of uh, revenue as well as uh, the EBITDA. Uh, it's a mixture of both. It's just not that the EBITDA is going to increase and the revenue is going to be at mute point. But the revenue also will increase. Uh, and our focus is only more in terms of, you know, how we realign our product mix where uh, overall we make a 50% gross margin. Okay. And earlier with very similar gross margin, we used to make, uh, you know, you know, around 20% EBITDA margin. So is is that a uh, you know, is that a kind of a, a realistic number to look at, or more realistic number would be 15, 17 percent kind of the No, I see. As I said, no, we want to get back to our historical levels. So yes, uh, we have plans where we will be at high teens or we will be at 20 percent. But this is uh, it's going to take uh, you know um, it, it's go it's going to be a combination of just not FI24, but it will be also FI25. Uh, because if you look at the year as a whole, when you look at an outgoing second half and uh, and more so with the Q4 of FI24, then, you know, we will be in the high teens uh, number. Uh, but yes, um, you know, our focus is always to see how we can get to uh, the 20% and then always work on improvement of uh, the EBITDA margins. And, and we have done that in the past, and there is no reason for us uh, not to believe that we cannot get there. Just uh, just I'll, uh, follow up on that. So from where we are today to where we will exit in FY24 Q4, do we see gradual improvement moving towards that high teens number, or will it come only in S2? Yeah, you will as a year as a whole. When you compare FY24 to FY23, you will see a a, a, a better number in terms of the EBITDA percentage. Um, so yes, and I said, said you know we. Over the next uh, few quarters, uh, we'll be able to then come out and probably give a guidance as to how we are doing. Because there are, there are some moving parts which we want to just finalize, uh, one of them being the reclassification of the Karnur OAI facility, then getting the uh, new products uh, uh, triggered by our uh, customers, and these new products which we also filed from WITAC, uh, that also uh, we will see those validation quantities going to be picked up by the customer. So all the um, all the actions, um, you know, what we have uh, we have already undertaken. Now it's only about the result, and uh, probably over the next few quarters we'll be able to guide better. Okay. But year on year, there will be an improvement in both in revenue, EBITDA, as well as the EBITDA percentage. Understood. Understood. Thanks. All the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is on the line of Vedant Aryan Ketan from Konak Investments. Please go ahead. Oh, yeah, hi. Hello. 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 Yes, please. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, congrats on the Solara 3.0 strategy and the improvement of financials. However, I just wanted some guidance on what really changed between 2021 and today in terms of the business, because you said you had really done the base. And uh, how do we expect to get back to earlier levels, the historic levels you mentioned? So if I understand your question, um, you're asking what is, what is going to change from 2021 to the next financial year, correct? What really changed for the dip in the financial performance, and what are we doing to get back to the historic levels? 
so the dip in financial performance, uh, uh, I'll let me comment more in terms of what we are doing uh, that will get back to our historical levels and uh, from there onwards the growth. Uh, we did mention the focus areas, right? And it's, it all comes down to the execution of our of our focus areas, that is the growing the existing business, the new products, the CIP plan, and you know the uh, and building our camps business. I, I think these are our four uh, key areas, and subset of that is you know the enhanced capacity utilization at Vizac. Uh, so we are focusing on these uh, four growth pillars, as we call it. And, uh, and, uh, and we are very confident that, you know, all the uh, actions, what we have planned for these four areas uh, will yield in better results in the coming years. And we are already seeing that in FY23. You will see that in FY24 as well as the years coming forward. Thank you. The next question is in the line of Ankit Gupta from Bamboo Capital. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, sir, if you can talk about, you know, how has been the moment uh, in uh, uh, realization of uh, some of our great products, including ibuprofen, over the past year? So we don't give specific uh, realization product by product, but uh, as you can see, uh, the margins improving, so the realization of our overall product mix is getting better. And how much is ibuprofen currently contributing to our top line? Again, we, we don't give that number in terms of our uh, ibuprofen vertical, how much it contributes. It's very but sensitive you know, information. So let's say, you know, but, but if you can just give a ballpark number, let's say, you know, uh, like have we reduced our, our dependence on ibuprofen over the past two, three years or it remains the same? We are growing our ibuprofen business because it's, ibuprofen for us is just not one product. Uh, there are multiple products in the ibuprofen itself. And uh, our growth in ibuprofen as well as non-ibuprofen products, uh, uh, you know, both are growing at probably the equal, uh, at the same percentage. So, and so, and so you, uh, you, you like, and uh, how do you see this, uh, the, the product mix, uh, uh, you know, rem changing or remaining the same over the past, over the next two three years. No, the product mix uh, is not going to remain the same because we are also going to file new products. Uh, you know, as I said, uh, we are improving the R&D velocity and we are focusing more on the quality of filing rather than the quantity. Uh, so yes, the product mix, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just a funnel approach, right? You know, because every new product we file, then we see the commercialization happening in two or three years. So that's the momentum we are driving forward from a product mix perspective. So, and my last question was, your, uh, was on you know uh, the guidance for growth uh, over the next uh, year uh, or so. So, how do you see the uh, the, the growth in the top line for FY24 and 25? It will be in the similar lines of FY23 or better. Okay. Okay. Because, you know, FI23, we, yeah, okay, okay, thanks, thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that is our last question. I now hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Thank you again, everyone, for joining the Solara's uh, call. And we look forward to our next call uh, post our Q1 results. Thank you, and have a great day. Bye. Thank you, members of the management team. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Solar Active Pharma Sciences Limited, that concludes this conference call. We thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.